Hello, Cholo Kutepa is my name and I just want to share with you on the subject of interceding for your partner, whether in marriage or in relationship. Alright, let me give you a very simple story that runs through the Bible. Jesus looks at Peter and says, you know what Peter, the enemy has asked to save you, but I have prayed for you. Alright, Peter, you are still going to fall, but when you fall and you are restored, he says, restore your brethren also. In essence, Jesus recognized that Peter was going to go through a trial and temptation. That's the first thing I will share with you today. Your partner is going to face temptations. They are going to face diverse kinds of trials. That's why they are believers. All right, because the enemy is interested. Now, he's going to be interested in your relationship. He's going to be interested in your marriage. That shouldn't scare us. That should never scare us. But what that brings us to is to ask us what do we do when our partner or relationship goes through diverse kinds of trial. So Jesus said to Peter, I have prayed for you. And based on my prayer, you are going to get restored. All right, what was Jesus saying here? In essence, I begin to intercede when I see things from the spiritual perspective. You cannot intercede for your partner until you learn to see things from the spiritual perspective. So you see, Jesus did not take an approach of judging, condemning, attacking. Jesus saw the reason or the hand behind the trial. All right, so Peter's denial was not going to get him, uh, you know, angry, disappointed. Yet Jesus could have been disappointed. Like Peter had been with you for three years, three and a half years perhaps. All right, I've done miracles. You've seen me do things. All right, you promised me life and death. I once asked people, would you go away too? And you, Peter, said to me that to whom do we go? Who else has the words of eternal life? All right, so Jesus must have gone through all of that disappointment. Now, this is the same thing that happens in relationship and marriage, where you come to the point where you are able to discern beyond their action. In fact, this is why Jesus was able to say to Peter at a point, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Jesus continually related with Peter with a spiritual understanding, not necessarily paying attention to his physical acts. So you cannot intercede for your partner when you are always focused on what they are doing without identifying what the devil is trying to do behind. Alright, let me repeat that point. You would not intercede for your partner if you are always focused on what they are doing, interpreting it based on your five senses without identifying what the devil wants to achieve in your marriage or your relationship or what God wants to achieve. So intercession begins from the point where you have a clear understanding of the spiritual workings and interactions of relationships. Intercessions begin, intercession begins when you have a clear understanding that this thing is more spiritual than it is physical. That this thing has a lot of, to do with the spiritual dimension before you come into the physical. Alright, so Jesus said to him, I have prayed for you. You are going to get restored. When you are restored, restore your brethren. All right, so that's the first thing I want you to know. That's the heart of it, intercession, understanding the dynamics. Now, do you intercede for your partner only when they are falling or want to fall? No. All right, so I'm going to give you two dimensions of intercession. The first dimension of intercession is where you do not even see any physical sign of trouble. When Jesus was praying for Peter, Peter had not been tempted, the temptation that led him to the fall. Peter had not been tempted to deny him as he were. In fact, Peter had given a big revelation about him. Peter had said, you know what? To whom else do we go to? Who else has the words of eternal life? Peter had said to him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter had interpreted him right. But he could see the future that the devil always, always waits at strategic points. So he began to pray for him. So every time you're in a relationship that works or your marriage is working, you're not praying out of fear. You are interceding for them for grace and continued release of strength from heaven so that when the devil sets traps and trappings for them, they would overcome. So you intercede at great times too. You pray for your partner at good times too. You don't wait until there's a crisis. You don't wait until the fall. All right, you're like a soldier. You don't get prepared for battle on the battlefront. All right, you release grace. You, you make preparation before you get there. So some of you are getting, you know, enjoying marriage at the moment. You're enjoying, you know, all that marriage brings and you feel happy, you feel fly. What do you do? 
One of the fences you must build on the marriage is the fence of intercession, where you pray for them. You, you cover them with the blood. You cover them with the wisdom of the Lord. You ask the Lord to give them grace. You ask the wisdom from above to dominate them. All right, you pray for them to meet, connect with, and relate with the right people. That's one of the things you must do. If you have a single people, one of the things you must do, somebody may be in your life whom you believe in, you believe in their salvation, you believe you know, in their testimony. What do you do? You spend time praying for them. You spend time praying for them, interceding for them, solidifying their faith in Christ, making sure that grace is released towards them. That's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians, uh, first, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, he said, Brethren, since I heard of your faith, I do not cease to mention you in my prayer. I do not cease to mention you in my prayer. What was he saying? He said, because I recognize and identify that you have come into a kingdom and the enemy would do anything to make you not understand your place and to make you derail. I continually mention you in my prayer. Why was he mentioning them in his prayer? To release grace on them. So he goes on to say that the Lord God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, may open your mind. All right. May open the eyes of your understanding that you may see and know. In essence, what is he doing? He was praying them into maturity. He was releasing grace on them to become. Intercession. You must intercede for your partner. All right, then some of us, of course, are in marriage are already in very difficult places where our partners may be acting up or making mistakes or living in weaknesses they should not live in. What's intercession at that point? Two dimensions of intercession. Number one, you are pleading the mercy of God to suspend judgment because every time we go out of his will, we expose ourselves to destruction. So one of the first things intercession does is intercession brings us to the point where we Ask God to release his mercy to suspend judgment. He suspends judgment because our partners may be deserving of destruction based on their choices. So interceding for them brings us to the point where we plead mercy over them. Mercy over them. Mercy that covers their mistakes. Mercy that, uh, you know, mercy that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, breaks, you know, the, the, the hold of the devil over them because the devil wants to drive them to destruction. The second thing intercession does when there's already a mistake is that God begins to pour forth light and orchestrate circumstances for them to see the light. God begins to pour forth light. God begins to orchestrate people to speak to them. God begins to orchestrate people who talk to them. God begins to orchestrate people you know, who influence them differently. So look, intercession is a key part of relationships and marriage. If you do not know this point, this is why people come to the point where it looks like the devil is winning. Because we are not making the prayer investment to take charge. We are not making the prayer investment to stop the devil. See, some people, it's not even big sin or the things we call big sin. Your partner will just start getting, acting up, acting up, acting up, behaving in ways that, you know, are not, cons you know, it's not consistent with the faith. Or acting up, getting angry, being irritable, getting in the flesh. One of the ways you deal with that is to continually intercede for them so that they remain at their best in Christ. That's what to do to win in relationships and marriage. All right, so I believe that, you, that this message has been a blessing to you and God, God will establish you in the name of Jesus in your relationship and in your marriage and cause the relationship and the marriage to prosper and to excel in the name of Jesus. So you need to intercede. And let me quickly add this as I go. Even if you're single, and you have not even met the one, begin to intercede for the person who will come into your life. Intercede for them and the Lord will orchestrate circumstances to make them understand their place, live in their place and have a rewarding and fulfilling relationship. God bless you in Jesus' name.